Welcome back to, at the time of the end, the book of Isaiah, chapter 24. Verse 2. And the people will be like the priest, the servant like his master, the maid like her mistress, and the buyer like the seller, the lender and the borrower, the creditor and the debtor. The earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled for the Lord has spoken this word. The word Lord there is literally Yahweh. Yahweh has said this. Yahweh has said this is going to happen. Therefore, brethren, it is yea and amen. Now we see this in the New Testament brought again to us by the, by the apostle prophet John in the Revelation. But it's also on other places. Verse 4, the earth mourns and withers. The world fades and withers. The exalted of the people of the earth fade away. Now, it's interesting. We've been watching end time events in this church uh, since this church began in 1990. Uh, my wife and I have been watching and monitoring end time events uh, since the David Wilkerson crusade in 74. And we have seen things happen in 2010 and onward that were astonishing and much more astonishing than all the years before. Even though we have seen prophecies fulfilled in those years before, we have seen things come about that were spoken of by David Wilkerson and others. But yet, December to January of 2010 to 2011 was astonishing. We saw something happen. We saw the earth actually shift in its orbit and turn on its axis. The, the Eskimos in the north began saying, something's wrong, the winds have shifted, and they had never shifted in all our generations. The, the snow tongues were facing the wrong direction. They had a hard time navigating all of a sudden. Uh, the sun started coming up in a different place uh, in the east and setting in a different place in the west than we've ever seen before. All of a sudden, the shadow and the moon changed, and many people on, on the internet were writing and complaining, saying, what's going on? What happened to the moon? Well, the earth that cast that shadow has moved, so the shadow suddenly is, is changed. It's not perfectly vertical like it used to be. It's off to the side uh, for a good amount of the time. It's totally changed. It's incredible to see these kinds of changes, and, and yet the world still doesn't seem to notice. The people look up and, they, and, and people have told me they feel like something's wrong inside, but they just shrug and go, oh well, because they don't want to know. They don't want to consider that maybe everything has changed. But the, the earth has shifted. One of the big things that's happening on the internet, as you're on the internet watching me right now, I challenge you to do this on YouTube, go in and put in strange earth sounds or sky sounds. And you'll see that all over the world, starting in 2010, 2011, the earth started groaning and moaning. It's happened here in Seattle several times. Friends have heard it sometimes like a drumbeat uh, around Mount Rainier. And then it's and in other places, it sounds like trumpets blasting. Other places, it sounds like giant machinery. People out in the middle of the Canadian wilderness, way away from anything, have heard it coming from 360 degrees around them in the sky. Strange lights now are happening in the sky and are being seen worldwide uh, above the clouds, way above the cloud layers, just below the troposphere. And, uh, and so energy is coming, is hitting the Earth's uh, magnetosphere and is, uh, is reacting with uh, giant flashes of light and energy uh, uh, discharges. Everything is changing. Our weather now has become incredibly crazy. And uh, just like we were warned that it would, uh, they just stated that here we are, uh, the 25th of April, and they're talking about the first hurricane has formed. It's already formed. It's, it's in the North Atlantic, so it's not uh, a cyclone. It is a hurricane, and it's uh, off the coast of Mexico. And it's, it's way too soon, but it's already formed. It's record-breaking every day. And the reason is because 
the Lord is beginning to shake the earth. We have a record-breaking number of volcanoes going off. 45 right now are going off as of yesterday and today. 45. The plague that has hit the earth in the United States alone, we're at 52,000 dead. They thought that maybe by the end of the weekend we'd hit 50,000. We're well over it already. And that's one plague. There's many more coming. And a lot of those folks are Christians. And remember, I've had people tell me, oh, good Christians will not get this plague. And it's not true. And I correct them over and over again. Again, good Christians are getting this plague. Wonderful Christian saints are sacrificing their lives in China, ministering to people during the plague and giving their lives, dying, in my opinion, dying as martyrs. God is shaking the earth, and he's been shaking the earth since 2011. He's been shaking the earth and getting people ready. The Bible warns us and tells us that in the last days that the earth itself will groan, waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. You could say sons and daughters of God. It's true. It is groaning. Go and listen to it on YouTube before it's taken down and you can't hear it and watch it anymore. There is a, a, a messianic rabbi that put together all the different earth sounds, the genuine ones that are from news services and trustworthy sources. They put them all together and played them all at once, and it sounded like an ancient temple orchestra. It was incredible, complete with trumpets, ram's horns sounding trumpets, drums, and, and it, it was amazing. It was just incredible. God is causing the earth to tremble, brethren, right now. And just like Jesus said, there will be earthquakes uh, uh, and, and pillars of smoke and fire. The pillars of smoke and fire are volcanoes. That's volcanoes. And right now we have a record number of them going off. Why is, it, why is this happening? What's happening? Why is God doing this now? There's those of you who think that well, we won't be in the end times till we see a covenant signed and, uh, and uh, there's a new temple that has been declared. Listen, brethren, you better throw that away real quick. The scripture is very, very clear that we are the temple of the living God, Paul says. He says it over and over again. No, you're not, brethren. You are the temple of the living God. You want to see a third temple? Look in a mirror. That's your third temple. So you don't understand 2 Thessalonians. Well, go to my earlier uh, messages uh, at the time in the end, and I'll go through that for you and explain it to you. We are the temple of the living God. Don't look for a physical temple. Don't look for that peace treaty because it's already here. It was signed in 93. It's already here. President Trump just, just brought in the last part of it, the last part of it, the final solution. And it was Israel giving up the Temple Mount back to the Arabs in exchange for peace. But it won't bring peace. If it wasn't that Abbas and his delegates had refused this portion of it, we would be in it now. Israel is ready to sign it. Israel, Netanyahu and Gats are about to sign it with Saudi Arabia and leave the Palestinians out of it. And uh, Saudi Arabia is going to be the new administrator of the Temple Mount, not Israel, just like Scripture says. So don't look for another physical temple to be built. Look, it's already here. That's why the earth is being shaken now. Verse 4 again says, The earth mourns and withers, the earth fades and withers, and exalted of the people of the earth fade away. Well, the exalted, the big, the big shots of the earth, they're disappearing. This is happening right now. That's why I'm bringing you this video. It's happening right now. It's in the news right now. The powerful of the earth are fading away. They're disappearing. Because they have bought underground shelters and they're fleeing to them now. They've bought underground shelters and they're fleeing to them. They've cast their idols of gold and silver to the moles and the bats. And that's where they're going. 
Verse 6, excuse me, verse 5. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants, for they transgressed laws, violated statutes, broke the everlasting covenant. Now I want to go through this. Is, um, of course, I'm reading through the, the uh, NAS, but I want to go through this. The word polluted is literally corruption. The earth is corrupted. And the word by is literally, as my NES shows me in the margin, under its inhabitants. The earth is corrupted under its inhabitants. The earth itself is corrupted underneath the feet of its inhabitants. Why? Why is the earth corrupted under the feet of its inhabitants? I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I wanted to hit that point. Okay, um, let me go back. Um, no, I'm going to stay here. The earth is corrupted underneath the feet of its inhabitants. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 59. Let me read a few verses here for you. Um, and I'm reading again through the NAS. Isaiah 59. Seven verses. Verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save. Neither is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity, and your lips have spoken falsehood. Your tongue mutters wickedness. No one sues righteously and no one pleads honestly or honesty. They trust in confusion and speak lies. They con conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch ad adder's eggs and weave a spider's web. He who eats of their eggs dies and from that which is crushed a snake breaks forth. Their webs do not become clothing, nor will they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and, and an act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to uh, evil, and they hasten to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, devastation, and destruction are in their highways." So what am I talking about here? I'm not talking about the church, am I? I am. And the reason I am is this, brethren. The church, we had a chance a couple of years ago to reverse Roe v. Wade in this country, and we turned it down, and it was going strong in the South, and they were uh, in all the churches, uh, getting the churches behind the movement to vote out uh, 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 abortion in the southern states, in the Bible Belt states. And guess what? It passed back into law and was strengthened. And it was by the vote of the churches. The Christians in the churches voted for abortion. Are we so ignorant? Are we so ignorant that we shed innocent blood? Don't you know, brethren? And this is what just bothers me so much. The church is so ignorant of the cost of ignoring the word of God. Because whenever innocent blood is poured out, blood is required. You wonder, and I've heard it said over and over again, why are judgments hitting us? Why are the righteous suffering with the guilty? Because as a nation and as a church of Jesus Christ, we have voted for the iniquity. We have not uh, risen up against it. We have not voted against it. We're more concerned with our wallets and with our uh, uh, crystal cathedrals and our marble floors than we are with righteousness. Listen, brethren, again, better to be a, a, a remnant, to be a small group, a remnant in your church, 
than to dwell with wickedness because the wickedness is being judged now. It's being judged now. And, uh, and it is, God is about to shake the whole earth and all of us in it. And you need to be on the side of God and on the side of righteousness and put away wickedness and put away the evil thoughts and put away uh, uh, the, the uh, excuses for, for wickedness, for the shedding of innocent blood. Listen, the reason there's shedding of innocent blood is because people are out uh, uh, lying with one another, uh, sleeping with one another, and saying it's their right to do so. A disease is spreading among people like crazy. Uh, 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 lifestyle is getting looser and looser. We truly are Sodom and Gomorrah now. There's Christians that are supporting Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and we wonder, why is God's judgments falling? Ah, brethren, God is calling for holiness, not wickedness, not wickedness. He's calling for holiness. I'll show you what he's about to do on the next teaching. Lord bless.